Welcome to our lecture online. Notice that when we try to find the area of revolution, we could have the object oriented with symmetry along the x-axis or with symmetry along the y-axis. And the method of finding it, or finding the area, is slightly different between the two. And there's also another thing we could do, just like with arc length. We could take the variable x, or take the function of x, and make that a function of y, just like we did with arc length. Or we could uh, do it like this. So let me show you what that looks like. So here, to find the area of revolution of this widening cone right here, which is symmetric about the x-axis, again, we have the function of x along the edge there. We have a small little DL segment. We then wrap that around the x-axis. We form a small little DA that is on the surface of this cone, and then we integrate from x equals a to x equals b. So what we have essentially is we have 2 pi times the distance, the radius from the axis to the surface. Of course, that's going to change. Oop, can we erase that a little bit? So that's going to change as we go from x equals a to x equals b. So the radius of that essentially becomes the function of x. So we have 2 pi times the radius times what we needed to find the arc length, which is the square root of 1 plus the function of x, take the derivative of that, square that inside the square root sign, and multiply times dx. And so this is the way we get the arc length, and we multiply that times the way in which we then revolve it around the surface to get that small little area element. What we could also do is we could have something like this when it's situated where now it's symmetric along the y-axis. We use the same principle. We have the function of x here on the edge of that object. We then take a small segment of that, that's a small arc length dl, and then we wrap that around the y-axis, but now notice that the radius is going to become x instead of the radius being the function of x. And so when we then integrate, we have 2 pi times the radius, but instead of writing the function of x, we simply write x times, again, the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared of the function, which of course gives us the arc length when we integrate from x equals a to x equals b. So it's essentially the arc length revolved around the, well in this case around the y-axis, and here it's revolved around the x-axis. So you can see that it doesn't matter which way it's oriented, you can always find a way to revolve around either the x-axis or the y-axis, and then you write it like this to find the, the area. So that's how it's done, and now of course you're really anxious to see some examples of how that's actually applied, and we'll show you that on the next videos. Anxious? Yes, all eager. Excited. Excited, there you go, better words. <laughs> <laughs>